Hey friends, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're talking about the EJ207 in the version 7 STI and why it might be the greatest Subaru WRX STI engine ever made. I've owned a version 7 Bug Eye STI back in 2016 when I was still a senior in high school. And to be honest, I didn't really pay attention to all the little fine details that Subaru put into it to make it so good. I was just focused on driving fast and impressing people in the parking lot. Before we get into the version 7 STI though, let's take a step back in time and look at all the previous generation engines that it was derived from. Please note, all the information noted in this video has been taken from various sources such as articles and forums, so I'm not 100% sure they're correct, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, and feel free to correct me in the comments section below. The STI name made its debut in 1994 as the WRX STI version of the WRX. So it wasn't its own proprietary car. It was just a version of the WRX. So some people may say that the version 2 STI was a real start of the Subaru WRX STI. So this version 1 had a retuned version of a closed deck EJ20G with some restyled exterior bits to differentiate it from the regular WRX. This STI engine pushed around 240 to 250 horsepower and around 230 foot-pounds of torque. From what I was able to gather online, the closed deck was more easier to produce back then because there was less tooling required to create the channels in between the cylinder walls and the actual block walls itself. Now, this is an interesting thing to look back on, having a closed deck block from the factory, because now you don't really see closed deck blocks unless you're doing some high horsepower builds. The version 2 SCI comes in with some new restyled aesthetics and also no longer a version of the WRX, but its own proprietary brand and car as the Subaru WRX STI and is produced alongside the WRX at the Subaru manufacturing plant in Japan. This generation saw the introduction of gold wheels, which is still such a sought after color choice for wheels for Subaru enthusiasts today. This car also came with the EJ20G, but was no longer a closed deck block. It had forged pistons and pushed around a rated horsepower of 270. But this rated horsepower was not always accurate due to the gentleman's agreement. The gentleman's agreement from 1988 in Japan states cars should produce no more than 276 horsepower and be limited to 180 kilometers per hour. So if you look at JDM gauge clusters from 1990s, you'll notice that it only goes to 180 and that is a direct result from this agreement. The version 3 and 4 STI come steaming in with even newer and aggressive styling and the introduction of the EJ20K engine series. On a side note, the version 4 STI was my first car, so talking about this is fairly close to my heart. Anyways, the EJ20K was somewhat similar to the EJ20G, having an open deck block and factory forged pistons, but it also had some differences as well. Firstly, it had a new and upgraded intercooler, no longer a weird slanty one. The turbo was changed to a VF23 slash VF24. And most importantly, even though it has no technical or performance advantages, the intake manifold was painted red. Now, the red paint didn't stay very long. Obviously, it was painted back in the 90s. So this is what my actual engine bay looked like. If you look close, there are spots of red right below where the intake manifold was covered, but anything that was exposed to the elements was completely peeled off. But it is interesting that the STI had the red paint up until it was discontinued in 2021. The version 5 and 6 STI, my all-time favorite in terms of styling, I actually have this as my poster on my back wall behind me, but you obviously could not see it because my head is so freaking massive. Anyways, this car has an even more aggressive styled exterior with a new bumper, clear headlights, and yes, the big wang. This car has the introduction of the EJ207, and I'm not gonna get into too much detail about this engine because compared to the version 7 EJ207, it's not too notable, but it still retains the open deck block, forged pistons from the EJ20K, but still not too much of a departure from the EJ20K. Now imagine this. You're a hotshot engineer in Japan in the 90s. You're driving home from a long day at work in your version 6 STI. Suddenly, your pager buzzes. It's your manager. You pull over to a phone booth and he tells you, 
Mitsubishi is continuing on with the 4G63 in the version 7 Evo. You laugh. Oh, those crank walking a triple diamond freak. So lazy to just continue with the same boring recipe. You feel like this is the perfect opportunity to revitalize the EJ engine, to settle the debate once and for all that the STI is way better than the Evo. Now, your manager also tells you the styling is going to be based off a literal bug. You gag. You almost throw up in your mouth. But you have no control over that. All you can do is design an engine that will be heralded for decades. Okay, all jokes aside, please don't hate me, Evo fans. I love Evos. The 4G63 is an awesome engine and probably more reliable, can pick more horsepower than EJs, but we're not going to be talking about that in this video. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, the version 7 EJ207 and what makes it so special. Firstly, the pistons. It's been debated back and forth what the piston construction was, but it's been widely accepted the piston was factory forged. Compared to the version 8 and 9 JDM STI engines, which only have cast pistons, the forged pistons is obviously better in terms of high horsepower applications being more robust and rigid. The turbo is a single scroll VF30, which retains the rumble with the unequal length headers. Again, with the version 8 and 9 STI going to a twin scroll with equal length headers. AVIX, also known as AVCS, also known as Active Valve Control System, was added in this engine. And what this did was to modulate the camshaft timing to open the valve based on engine load. This improved drivability, improved torque, and reduced emissions. TGVs are deleted from the factory, but not completely. So what a tumbler generator valve does is to tumble the air entering the engine. And this was mainly used for cold start emissions. And the reason why it wasn't deleted completely is because the TGV partition is still found in the intake manifold. The block is a semi-closed deck, which means there are more bridges between the cylinder wall and the block casing, whereas an open deck block has very minimal to no support for the cylinder wall, and a closed deck block has barely any gap or very minimal gap between the cylinder wall and the actual block casing. A closed deck is ideal for high horsepower builds, where a semi-closed deck block can take up to 400 to 500 horsepower, which is highly debated. The exhaust valves are sodium filled. And what that does is during high temperatures, the sodium will change composition into a liquid and transfer heat from the valve head into the valve stem, therefore cooling the valve head. The engine revs out to a maximum of 8200 RPM, which is absolutely insane comparing to the new WRX, which only revs out to a mere 6100 RPM. Now the power, this engine is rated for 276 horsepower and 311 foot pounds of torque, which has been limited by the gentleman's agreement. So I wouldn't take these numbers too seriously. There have been rumblings that these numbers are extremely underrated, and I can't be certain this is true. But what shows the true potential of this engine is how much power it can make when it's modified and tuned. The internet dictates all that I find, of course, about this engine and everything else for that matter. But I've commonly seen this engine make 400 wheel horsepower fairly reliably with supporting bolt-on mods. I've seen it go even higher with ethanol. I believe with all these factors considered, the EJ207 in the version 7 STI may be the greatest STI engine ever made. Not because of the high horsepower potential, the most reliable, or was a spec C engine under wraps, but because it was released in a transitionary period for Subaru, where it was coming out of the 90s, where it took its rally heritage roots and the lessons learned from the past six STI generations and amalgamated it into this one engine, where the Subaru engineers weren't so hindered by emissions and cost savings the way they are now. I personally feel fortunate to own one and my favorite thing about it was when I was able to rev it up to 8,000 plus RPM where it sang in harmony with the notchy 6-speed STI transmission. It's an engine I wish we got in North America from the factory. So what do you guys think about the EJ207? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Tell me why in the comments. 
And also, how do you think it measures up compared to the new FA24, which has been making ridiculous power numbers with very minimal modifications? Anyways, friends, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel. I appreciate you all very, very much. I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care.